It's beer fest. The wide angle lens makes the brim of the hat look enormous. <laughs> I'm very excited to report the return to the Great Canadian Beer Fest. It's been an annual tradition on my vlog channel here for, well, I think we did three years running there, and then it was COVID, and then I had cancer, but now I'm back, and I'm very excited to be back. They've changed it this year, so you get 10 tokens with purchase of your ticket, so I'm starting with 10, but we'll get some more because that's how I roll. It's time to watch me get progressively inebriated over the course of this video. Thank you for being here. I would also like to mention, shout out and thank you to Ashley, who bought my ticket this year because I had to miss last year. So thank you. You're welcome. So I'm excited to be back. Today. I'm really excited. <laughs> this is myself and Ashley. I might actually be the people who are like most excited about Beer Fest. Yeah, it's like my favorite day of the year, certainly of the summer. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It's like a farewell to summer. It's, it's you know, it sure is. early mid September. It's like a capper on the yeah. summer. It's lovely. It's nice. Like the whole city sort of just has a chill, awesome time. Yeah. Like the first Saturday after school's back in, so like <laughs> the university students are here to party. Oh yeah. But then there's like Pineapple the middle aged people that are here to have a good time and drink some beer. I feel like I and I then nobody us, cares at like four thirty. It's just like what's available. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, to that point. So there's a whole beer list, and Matt has gone through, Matt's here, hi, hi, Matt's gone through and selected sort of like beers of note that you yes, want to try. I have. And you've come up with... 59. <laughs> so I'm probably going to die. My, my plan, as ever, is just to wander around and see what sounds nice. Yeah. I mean, my plan is to follow you around. Oh, okay. And then just get the beers that are on my list at any tent we stop at. Okay, fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. I like 59 beers. I mean, I tend to go hard at Beer Fest because I'm a large boy and I can handle my beer, but uh, 59 seems excessive. Oh, is that the bell? <laughs> We're in. Let's go. So previously they did it that you had your entry fee and that just got you in the door and then you had to go and buy tokens, which are basically two bucks each. And this time the entry fee gets you 10 tokens to start with. And I've gone and acquired an additional 10 tokens for my standard 20 tokens. Uh, although, as Dan points out, Dan and Corinne are here as well. Hello. Uh, the, typically what happens is I start with 20, and then as the day wears on, people go, I'm not going to use these last two, does anybody want them? And then that becomes my problem. Yes, you, well, and a problem that you opt into with very... Your inhibitions at that point are somewhere between zero and just give me the token. I will vigorously opt in, yes. This is the Infinite Radness, very good name, a Helles Lager from Studio Brewing in Burnaby, BC. I don't know what that means, Helles Lager. Ooh, that's crisp. That's a nice beer to start the day. It sure is. Mmm, mmm, I dig that. What do you have, James? Nicey spoony. What? Yeah, it's called Nifey Spoony. I went by name alone. I have no idea what this is. It's good. Where's it from? Um, Humblebee Meadery. Oh. It's right over there. Oh. It's a mead. So ours is a traditional German pale lager. This is the Garden City Sour. Victoria's the Garden City from Whistleboy. And it's good. It's not, it's not blowing me away, but it's, but it's very nice. <laughs> mm, it's definitely sour. <laughs> I'll give it that. Matt, from the from the guide, how do they describe this this sour? Garden City Sour, a fruity, jammy delight with ingredients grown on the Saanich Peninsula, including 150 of berries along with Pilsner and wheat malt. Okay, it definitely tastes like berries, but I don't know. It, I appreciate that it's all local ingredients if they're going to call it the Garden City Sour. But I find I'm generally much more positive about everything here. It's just it's not very exciting. Yeah. I wanna know it's 150 what of berries? Grams? Pounds? Kilograms? 150 units of berries? Parsecs. <laughs> what is a what's a pruno? Bruno. Um, Bruno's uh, inspired by um, uh, prison wine, so uh, it's a, a alcoholic beverage that inmates would make in uh, the penitentiary. So at Hall Brewing, we do beer from all around the world, uh, different fermented 
fermented beverages. Um, you know, one, one of the ones on the list is Pruno. So it usually be made with ketchup, uh, fruit cocktail, mustard packages, sugar, and uh, usually would be fermented in a Ziploc bag behind a toilet. Um, but yeah, this is uh, made with local uh, organic ingredients and um, uh, yeah, it's uh, kind of in the spirit. It's got heirloom tomatoes and peaches and pears. And yeah, it's kind of a, a fun one. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy. Kathleen, I don't know how I feel about this. This is this is like gentrified prison wine. Hello. I don't know how I feel about this as a concept. He's like, normally you'd make it with like ketchup packets and mustard packets and a Ziploc bag behind a toilet, but we've done it with like heirloom tomatoes and nice fruits and stuff. I'm so glad. No, it's, it's, it's attracted to Corinne now. Um, huh. I feel like it might be like a fruit cake, right? Oh, it smells like sick. Oh, it tastes like it too. Holy shit. I'm in love with you. This is not my favorite. They have a smell or something on the French pot cake, or you just. Okay, awesome. It tastes like sugar. I don't I don't know how I feel about that. This is the, the Pruno. The artisanal Pruno. Uh, just give it a smell. Yeah. It, no. It kind of tastes like that too. Yeah. I want to try their other stuff though, because like their other stuff also sounds interesting, but this I do not love. What do you have? I have the spruce tip featured cask uh, ale from whatever brewery that is. Bus Fight. I cannot remember the name of the brewery, but they have a spruce tip infused ale as their Saturday cask. And so I went and got a, a sample of that. That sounds great. I'm going to go try that. Oh, that's really good. That is really good. It's got a nice sort of like fresh pine and citrus flavor to it. You think spruce tip infused ale? It's this, it's Buckley's mixture, but it tastes good. <laughs> and it works. <laughs> Dan, Dan's gonna try the artisanal prison wine. <laughs> oh, I feel incarcerated. It, it tastes like like dirty socks. Why? Okay. I could see this being made in prison. <laughs> Beer Fest for me is definitely about trying all sorts of random new stuff. So I'm pleased to be doing that. But I'm not hitting high today so far, three beers in on like interesting stuff. So far the interesting stuff is not for me tasted amazing. Shout out to Twin City Brewing for the free sunglasses. Always appreciated. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but a big draw for Beer Fest is that the brewers often have some sort of special nonsense that they've created just for Beer Fest, usually at a limited volume of a cask. And the special cask from Twin City Brewing in Port Alberni is this spruce tip ale, and it is delicious. It's so good. This is the cask from Russell Brewing. Yes. Uh, it's the Punch Bowl Grapefruit IPA. And you know me and IPAs, which is to say I don't like them, generally speaking. But it seems like people are finally pumping the brakes on the hops arms race. And this is merely a very pleasant IPA. It doesn't punch you in the face with how hoppy it is. Also, it tastes a bit like grapefruit. And I love grapefruit juice. Actually, it's quite a bit like grapefruit. Yeah, no, I like that a lot. James figures part of the reason this place has a preposterous line is that one of their beers is 10%. Oh, that could do it. It's really funny to me that this brewery from Nova Scotia is just serving them out of their cans, which is, I guess, completely doable and fine. It's just really funny to me. Two crows. They've got an Atlantic light lager. They have a uh, fantastic, bright, citrusy, and refreshing something. The Jamboree something the Jubilee something, and the Space Words something, which is velvety, juicy, and ridiculous, apparently. Is the brewery name a Terry Pratchett reference? Shoot. No, it's not. Someone asked me this question. It's from a collection of forums by some other guy whose name I can't remember. Okay. And he was a big food writer, which is kind of why we're a brewery and we also have a small restaurant. So what's this one, Matt? So this is the Caramel Macchiato Bella Caramel Macchiato Nitro Blonde. Coffee flavors combined with caramel, vanilla, bean, and lactose sugar to give this nitro blonde a smooth body and sweet taste. 
Let's find out. I'm actually slightly underwhelmed. It does have a smooth body and a sweet taste. It didn't lie. Um, it has good toffee notes on top. Oh, okay. And it's got a really nice, like, caramel coffee finish, but it takes a long time to catch up with you. Interesting. I actually like this more than the initial impression let on. This is really good. Conversely, I tried the She Will Be Everywhere Blueberry Ginger Sour. Right. Which is, uh, it's real good. It has no tasting notes in the guide, I'm afraid, so I can't tell you what it's supposed to taste like. It's inarguably a sour, but it really cleans up the, like, it doesn't have the, like, oh, and that's quite sour. Like, it's, uh, it's, I, maybe it's the ginger? I don't know. It's, it's really, really tidy. It's really, it's a crisp little boy. <laughs> it's good stuff. This is the 10 barrel aged sour with honeyberry from Four Winds, who typically do very good stuff. Oh yeah. So. Ooh, now, converse to Small God, She Will Be Everywhere sour, which really sort of like crisped off the sourness. This definitely tastes like a sour, but it is muted by the honey. Like you, you really taste the honey, and it's delicious. Mmm, mmm. Yep. No, that's really good. That's good stuff. Like a sour key, you get the sour, salt, and the sweet. A little uh, bit. Yeah. yeah. No, that's good. Dang. All right. On many recommendations, I went back to Russell for the root beer stout because I love a good stout. And this isn't like the best stout I've had, but it is one of the most dangerous because it mostly just tastes like root beer. It smells like <laughs> it smells exactly. It smells indistinguishable from root beer, yeah. and it tastes like root beer with a hint of stout in it. Meaning you could get belligerent oh, on yeah. this stuff. <laughs> so, uh, so it's good. It's honestly <laughs> top three so far. Top three so far for sure. I really liked the root beer stout. I demolished it, went back for their pumpkin pie, and it tastes like a pumpkin pie. Also really good. Again, dangerously delicious. I think my favorite part of the pumpkin pie here is that the beer itself tastes like pumpkin pie. Okay. The head tastes like whipped cream. That's amazing. Yes. It's just like frothy and it has like a good head on it. But it's it's like frothy and milky because there's lactose in the beer. Right. So the the head has like that the sort of like straight from a spray can whipped cream texture. What a cool thing. Yeah. That's great. This this also has lactose question mark? Uh, yeah. That, yeah, this one also has lactose. Interesting. Lactose. It's good in beer. The lineup at Two Crows is so big that they're almost out of all of their cans. But I did get their wheat beer. It's called the Fantasticity. Fantasticity. Uh, I'll have to run to the tape on that one. But uh, let's try it. I like wheat beers. That's nice. There's a very, very faint fruit flavor in there. It's mostly a little hoppier than I like my wheat beers. It's quite a bit hoppier, actually, than most wheat beers I've had. Uh, but it's nice. I finished the beer before I took the photo. Um, I'm a little out of practice. I don't even know if you can see. Can you see my face? Should I not be wearing the sunglasses for the purpose of video? We've only been here a couple hours, and now I'm getting very introspective about vlogging. I'm doing some mental math. I have 12 tokens left, meaning I've used eight. Matt got my first one, so I've had nine of these in 75 minutes, which explains a lot. This is the SOB, Sioux Oceanside Brewing, Baltic Porter. Delicious. 
which smells like salt, which I assume is the Baltic part. That's a key the Baltic part. Do you, Brit works in beer. Is that what the Baltic port? Uh, what's a Baltic porter? Uh, generally, so it's in reference to the Baltic Sea. Yeah. A lot of salt, a lot of good kind of like body and flavor. Okay. Usually heavy malt. It, yes. Yeah. I can smell that too. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. As you say, salt and malt. Oh, baby. Boy, it hits you. It's good. That is. Mm. That's good for the fall. Mm -hmm. that's, an, that's an autumnal beer. 100%. Oh, yeah. yeah. 100%. No, that's that's nice. I James James gave some feedback that their cask, which was a blackberry lime lager, was not yeah, worth it. So I didn't, and I got this instead, and this is very nice. What do you have? Uh, it's just a lager from Slow Hand. Honestly, great beer, really generic, very well produced. Um, I really like Slow Hand. They do kind of traditional, really easy drinking lagers pretty much all the time, and uh, this is one of their best. So it works, and it's a good palate cleanser. Ooh, that's a weird thing to say. It smells like very much like chocolate salt situation. Yeah. Yeah, it's really salty on the back end, actually. Yeah. I was like, at first I was like, it's just a porter. But no, no. The hell it's like, well, <laughs> Dan's not usually a porter guy, so. Still aren't. <laughs> Still am. <laughs> Still am. Still am. The porterman. Why does it smell so salty? Because it's Baltic. Yeah. I just. Yeah, you still, yeah. Like, it's wild. Like when I do like a bowl, I get like get actually already. I'm like, it's like you could drink that if you were dehydrated because it would replenish your salts. It smells like bilge water. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I love the I love the taste of a waterlogged tire fire. Actually, it's really quite nice. It's like nutty and black licorice. It's really quite good. It's this has been very divisive so far. <laughs> I enjoy it. Yeah, it's I don't know, like chestnut and black licor like salted black licorice. Yeah, it's good. It smells like an ocean barge. Yeah. <laughs> It's not for me. <laughs> I'm deeply curious about how this smells. Yeah, the uh, well, sorry, there's sorry, two main bulbs. It actually tastes good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on your side. Yeah, yeah. salted, salted caramel, salted black licorice. Yeah, yeah. but also kind of like the ocean. So. I like the ocean. <laughs> I've seen people around with pretzel necklaces, and I'll be really annoyed if the booth with. Giant inflatable pretzels doesn't have the pretzel necklaces. Hi there. Pretzel necklace, please. That's a $2, please. Thank you. No. Thanks so much. Now I'm this guy. Uh-oh. There was nobody lining up at that booth, so I figured I would try that booth. So I got a margarita creamsicle sour. I was like, they're nice. And it's nice. It's really quite nice. I was questioning earlier why that beer was called 10 when it was 7.8, but apparently Erica with the facts. It's uh, their 10th anniversary beer. Ah, it was nice. It's a good beer to have your anniversary for. The margarita creamsicle sour uh, is kind of delicious. It tastes like lemon ice cream, but not sweet. Wow, I've had better margaritas, but it is what it says on the tin. It was recommended to me that I try the rum vanilla porter from Locality Brewing. Oh my goodness. Oh. Now, okay, this is this is this is important. Hang on. Ah, this is sunglasses off important. The Baltic Porter from SOB is an autumnal beer. The rum vanilla porter from Locality is a winter beer. 
I will not extrapolate further. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And then last year was. You're going to bed. I not a fan of porters generally. Which is badly managed, yeah. Uh, they, so they changed it for choking. It is what it says on the tin. Oh. Matt's going through his list. He had flagged 59 beers as things he was interested in trying. Obviously, one human shouldn't, shouldn't try 59 of these at Beer Fest because you would, in the parlance of today, fucking die. So, instead, he's sort of paring it back. But we're trying to find out what he hasn't tried yet. And I'm waiting until there's one that sounds awesome to me so I can jump in and go, that one, let's go try it. So we have the Svetli Lezak 12 Degree, the description of which says, what do you call a pilsner brewed outside Pilsen? Why Svetli Lezak? Light lager, of course. Hold up, is Pilsen like champagne? I think so. Can you not have a pilsner that's brewed outside no, Pilsen? No, I don't think they regulate. We're breaking this whole thing wide open. Because lots of breweries outside of Pilsen make pilsners. So, no, I don't think it is the case. But, yes, it did originate in Pilsen. Huh. Anyhow, this is a premium Czech pilsner. Uh, sorry, premium Czech pilsner malt and Saz hops dance a bohemian polka. Across your palate, the hop and malt flavors partic- uh, perfectly oh, intertwine. Okay. Uh-huh. Another really good product. Anyhow, I want to try it. You're ever up there it's from Slohan. It's right there. Let's go try it. Okay. Turns out the Svetli Legak, aka a Pilsner made outside Pilsen, they didn't keg it. They couldn't keg it. It wasn't- it's not here. Bummer. So Mac got their- their other lager so that- Their Pilsner. We didn't- sorry, Mac got their other Pilsner so that we didn't feel embarrassed. But what's next on your list? Uh, so first, their Pilsner. The slow hand Pilsner is really good. So it doesn't feel like a total bust. It was really good. Uh, the next thing on my list that we haven't tried, the Sleepy Hollow Pumpkin Spice Nitro Latte. That's, not, that's from Small Gods, isn't it? Yes, it is. All right, let's go. We're getting deep into the weeds on what Beer Fest should be and being hypercritical of breweries that just bring their normal stuff. Like Phillips, which is like the number one brewery in Victoria, just brings like, here's some stuff you could buy at the store. Which is like, uh, why even bother? I get that they're here because they're Victoria's biggest brewery, but like, people come to Beer Fest for the weird nonsense. And I feel like, have your own stuff, obviously, but you should also have like, you know, like two of your normal things and then also, some kind of weird nonsense you made so that we can try it. I I think that's the ideal beer fest scenario. Yeah. I honestly thinking about it, if I were on the like organizational committee of Roof Beer Fest, I would do an award for the like an award for the like beer uh, the unique beer of the festival. Um, to like incentivize the various breweries to come up with something unorthodox and bring it to the event and reward them for it. Like, give them an award for the thing that's weird that everybody liked best. Uh, but Not even liked best, but just, like, was the weirdest Was the thing. weirdest, yeah. Get, like, get strange. With it. This is the Sleepy Hollow Pumpkin Spice Infused Nitro Latte. Look how it's settling. Cheers. Look at that. I love nitro beers. That's so cool. Oh, well, I have bad news for you, Graham. So? It's really good. <laughs> Bad news. Uh oh. Wait, hang on. Interest, interesting nose. It doesn't have a lot of like aroma, but it has all. It has pretty big flavor on the tongue. Hold that for a moment. Yes. Whoa. Hold on. <laughs> what is this? Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it's sweet and creamy. Yeah, I love this. Cinnamon and nutmeg. Yeah, this is great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It reminds me of the Fernwood coffee cream soda. Yes. With a little bit more like pumpkin spice in it, but it has a very similar pla flavor profile to the Fernwood Brewing coffee cream soda. 
it's really good. Yeah, that, you're right. That's wild. Wow. Cool. They've changed the rules so that your tickets now allow in and out privileges. We're going to head back to the moon base and chill out for a few minutes and then come back for an afternoon of beers. Heading back after lunch. James, how are you doing? Looking great. I'm feeling pretty good. Good. I have... Wait. 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 I should have six. Yeah. I have six tokens left? I have six of the 15 I started with. Nice. I have eight of the 20 I started with. Um, so let's continue drinking beer. Hell yeah. yeah. I said, where are we going? And Matt said 51. Matt, why are we going to 51? Old Yale Brewing. What's that? Uh, they have a salted lime Mexican lager, I think it was. Okay. I want to try it. All right. Yeah. Ooh. I actually really like it. The flavor is really light. So it's just like a nice lager with just a hint of lime and salt. Cheers. Oh, that's that's refreshing. That's invigorating after lunch. I like that a lot. Oh yeah. And that's what did you get? <laughs> water. Ah. Crisp finish. Not marred at all by the uh, rapidly warming temperature it's been served at. I'd say it's uh, a bit sweet on the palate with like hints of mineral. The Mexican lime lager. <laughs> it's very effervescent and it's almost like sparkling water. <laughs> That's really good. That's very, it's not quite sour. No, I Your like face it. was definitely selling. Uh, it is very fizzy, yes. like beer. Does that make sense? It's very fizzy beer. Yes. Okay. Uh, and yeah. Yes. <laughs> Fizz forward, says Matt. Fizz forward. Early impressions, without coming across as rude, is that this brewery needs a logo. This is exceptional. Now you didn't, it's so loud over here. You didn't get, I got the coffee, the nitro coffee stout. You got something else. The spruce tip IPA, and it is phenomenal. This is the best spruce tip beer of the three that we've had at the show so far. Uh, it is light and citrusy and crisp and a little bit like pine notes on the nose. It's, it's fucking great. Oh, oh, the coffee stout is so good. Oh my God, please. A sip. There you go. Whoa. Okay. When you first have this spruce tip thing, yeah, the very first thing that hits your mouth is, I'm eating a Christmas tree. Yes. And then half a second later, it's gone, and it's just amazing. And fruity? Yeah, like fruity and spice, like peppery, almost black pepper. Um, and just floral, like really, memories of walking through the forest. Additionally, the coffee stout nitro is also terrific. Holy crap, good job, rusted rake. Yeah, that just is like solid coffee flavor. It's legit. That's delicious. That's very, that's very coffee. I went back for the spruce tip IPA because Matt got it and it was so good. Yeah, so, 
Um, it's very weird. Uh, it has the same kind of vanilla end, but it's not as gentle as the last one, but the fresh part of it is better, like the crispy, sprucey, IPA, citrusy bit. And then it, it sort of very abruptly, abruptly changes from like lemon to like wood to like vanilla. It's very weird. It's a roller coaster. <laughs> that is like all hops. How do you feel about the sweet taste? Like the carbonation is great, but the flavor of the beer to me, it, it feels like it's trying to like get out of the way of the things that beer is supposed to do. Like it just feels hollow to me. I don't love it. I'm gonna drink it, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> what are you having? That was the one that you mentioned over there. How was that? It was pretty good. This is Ashley's. No, 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 no. Too dark, too heavy, too, no. This place, Mountain View Brewing, has two beers. Oh, okay. Yes, and so they are both inspired by Hope BC because that's where they come from. The first blood orange packs a punch as large as Sean Rambo's M16, they say. They filmed Rambo in Hope BC. I don't know if anyone else cares to know that, but I'll tell you, Hope doesn't let you forget it. Uh, so that's why it's called the First Blood Orange. Yes, and in the dark side of town, also inspired by Hope BC, because it's positioned in a mountain valley, means that there are parts of town that throughout the autumn and winter never see sunlight, <laughs> because the sun doesn't get over the mountains, and being in the Pacific Northwest, they're covered in cloud cover, like drizzly, rainy cloud cover, for several months of the year. So this is the dark side of town Schwartz beer. How's that? Delicious. That's, it's, there's not a lot to like comment on, but it's just a really solid sort of stout porter, like dark beer, just really excellent version of it. It's tasty, it goes down easy. It's got a nice flavor profile, a little bit of nut, a little bit of toffee. Yeah. You could drink several pints of this. The first blood orange. Wow, it's, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's not fruity, but it's fruity. Like it's not, it's not, it, it, it's not jammy. It's not sweet, but it's really nice. It's, it's very, like a really like, mellow orange flavor. Yeah, but there's definitely like a little bit of orange flavor there. But it's yeah. not like it's not. It's not like orange juice. It's not juicy, but it's. It's like pulpy. Yeah, fr pulpy, fruity without being juicy. Okay. Yeah. I, I. If that description is useful to you. Uh, then we've done our job. If not, I don't know what to tell you, man. <laughs> it's pretty good, though. It's nice. Yeah. I like it a lot. So new this year to Beer Fest, at least new to me, is an obstacle course, which you can buy into with Beer Fest tokens. I'm not doing it because I want to use all of my tokens for beer, because it's Beer Fest. But Ben and Nicole are doing it, and uh, we're going to watch and enjoy their suffering. Uh, I'm going to lose, like, real bad. But uh, you know, what's what's not beer fest about drinking way too much and then getting into an inflatable mobile device? I'm gonna win. Are you bouncing with people around your size and age? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait. yeah. Yes. <laughs> wait, but no. No. <laughs> You're probably fine. Three. We're adults. Yeah.
Greg, you fuck! <laughs> I made two grand. Yeah. Fuck yeah! You killed it. Right. I tried to tell them they'd all feel terrible when you dislocated your knee. <laughs> Man, I'm 30. I don't know if you're familiar, if you were at home with artist Anish Kapoor. Um, he's made some stuff that is legitimately really cool, like uh, the Bean in Chicago. But he's also notorious for being kind of an asshole. In that he hates it when you call it the Bean. It's actually called Cloudgate. He did a thing where like someone made Vanta Black, like the blackest black ever, and he licensed it so no one else could use it. And now everyone thinks he's an a-hole for that. Um, it's annoying because I really like some of his work, but I don't like him. Anyway, there's a beer here that is called Anyone Can Have This Beer Except Anish Kapoor. So on his, obviously I have to try it. I was just gonna tell you that actually it's called Cloud Cake. It is cool though, I've been there in real life. And like, you're like, ah, it's a big fucking shiny beer. It's a very cool big shiny bean. I don't know if you need to see ID, but I'm not Anish Kapoor, Perfect. so... Amazing, we can serve you a black carpet dive like season to one. <laughs> the, you can buy this if you are not Anish Kapoor. Black currant saison is really nice. Sucks to Anish Kapoor, I guess. If he wanted to have respect, he shouldn't have copyrighted the use of the blackest black. You know, bought pink illegally and then given everybody the finger of it. Sorry about that. You can buy this unless you're asking for a black green season. That's okay. That's fine. Go to booth two and get Eel Sauvage's, what the hell is it called? I lost it. They have a watermelon honeydew beer, which seems like your speed, not my speed. But so I actually don't like honeydew, but I do like Il Sauvage and Gozes. So you know what? I'm gonna try it. Graham, what do you think about a traditional melon-based Gozes? So here's the thing, I don't love melon, honestly. Okay. Uh, I like watermelon just fine. I don't like other melons, but I like Gozes and I like Il Sauvage specifically. Ooh, that's nice. That's, it's salty. Yeah, so the thing I like about specifically gosas that are not tart based, so like grapefruit and that sort of thing, is they seem to get a little more out of their, their oeuvre, shall we say. Uh, so the melon, a bit of a sweet aspect, gives more to the body of the beer. Do you agree or? I do agree as it happens. This is, yeah, this is really, this is really, makes me forget I don't like melon. So, less honeydew, more watermelon based, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it says, I assume there's a third melon because it's called the Melana Trois. Yeah, yeah, there, there is uh, cantaloupe included as well. See, so I don't like cantaloupe either, and yet, here we are enjoying this beer. Great, love to hear it. Cheers. Thanks, Il Sauvage. Onward. This is this is the Bellwoods Jelly King Sour. Sorry, I didn't. Whoa, dang! That's, I see why it's called the Jelly King. It tastes a little like candy, but it's also delicious. 
<laughs> May I? Please. <laughs> a well known fan of sours. Yes. That's a beer for you and not a beer for me. <laughs> not every not everybody likes the sours, and I'm okay with that. You know what it tastes like? What? Wine gums. It does taste like wine gums. Oh my god, it tastes like wine gums. <laughs> I think he is probably by Yeah, wow, it really does. Huh. I appreciate they've described their IPA as fruit out the ass. What, you got the one you wanted or you got the cask IPA? Uh, I, so they have a cask IPA and another IPA and the other IPA, the one I got, is labeled in a subheading as fruit out the ass. Mac got the cask one. How is it? It's really good. Not anything to write home about, but it's really like just a solid IPA. The, the fruit, okay, hold up. This thing tastes like fruit snacks, but like old school, like dinosaur shaped, like not like really store brand fruit snacks. Okay, we're gonna trade. Yeah, that's like the aftertaste of a grapefruit snack. I, you know how some tastes and scents will give you nostalgia? I drank that and flashed back to Mrs. Flowers' after school care when I was in kindergarten. Like that tastes like old fruit snacks. That's fucking wild to me that that did that to me. Can you go to the wedding? I hope First of all, how dare you? Secondly, let me try Matt's drink. I mean, yeah. If you crash it, let me go. Oh, well, too hoppy. Nope, don't really? like it. Don't like it. Really? Nope. Prefer this one. This, I, I found this one so mellow and like not really forward in any regard. I'm actually surprised you find it too hoppy. Maybe it's having it directly after this one, which was a literal like flashback nostalgia hit in a way that I was not prepared for. Not in my experience. I had a sip of that and then a sip of this. This is like, it's a poppy seed IPA and it is a lemon poppy seed muffin. It's fine. Well, I did the cask IPA. Oh, no. That's, that's kind of robust on the nose. It's a very mellow. Do you also remember Graham's childhood? <laughs> no, but it's very nice. It's nice. Yeah, it's very rich. Oh, like deep sort of gummy flavor. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. you have the gelatin in there. It's like really standing up. Yes, it is a thick. That is a thick, juicy beer. <laughs> I prefer the one with thinner. Juicy with at least four C's. It's getting very late in the day now, and I'm trying to enunciate as much as I can, but also Matt and I are going to Fernie Brewing, and we're gonna see what they have. Fernie makes pretty good beers. They do. But I have no idea what they're actually pouring today, so. But all that Fernie we'll does find well. Out. Sorry if you're from the Fernie. Project. We're reaching the point of the day when everyone's really friendly and just wants to <laughs> ask you what your beer of the day is. It's great. The Spruce Tip IPA. That is my beer of the day as well. I need to sit down, so I'm going to get into this van. Oh. Hi, what's up? What is this? Hello. Now I'm in a van. Do not any under any circumstances do what I'm doing right now. Do not. If you have zero beers, do not sit in the driver's seat of a car. It's a bad idea. You shouldn't do it. Correct. I appreciate that they have air fresheners. It's a new brewery scent. They're not selling any other merch here, which is unfortunate for them because in my current state I would definitely have bought a sweatshirt. But uh, it's good stuff. radio. We're driving down the I-5 over. You like you like you like the pins, eh? So I have gotten into this van and then discovered that the handle with which one opens the door 
is not here anymore. So I think I'm stuck in this van forever. All right, hang on. We got to rescue Matt. Just a moment. We got to go around. Got to go around the whole van. Got to rescue my boy. Here we go. Take How do I open this? It's locked. Apparently I locked it. There we go. This is a Belgian Blanche. They call it the Blanche Devereaux. Because this is the Golden Girls. Thank you for being a friend. That's a good name, actually. Oh, that's crisp. That's sort of all I can say, but also it's late in the day, so my reviews get less, <laughs> less, less loquacious, yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. May I have a sip? Thank Please. You. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is definitely a blush. I don't have much else to say, but it's a little bit tart. Very citrusy. Tart forward. It's good. For what it, like, for the varietal it is, it's good. Not for me. I'm glad Matt's here to say the things I wish to say. It is citrus. It is tart forward. Yeah. I like launches. This is nice. I'm here to say it's really nice. As one... Oh, as, yeah. As one, Finally. As one particular video editor maybe has roasted me in the past. It's really it's nice. nice. It's nice. <laughs> yeah. Like Matt, I returned to Rusted Rake to get more of the Spruce Tip IPA. And I said, would you believe there are three other, well, two other, three total Spruce Tip beers here today. And he said, really, which one's the best? And I said, yours. That's why I'm back. Uh, Good job, Rusted Rake. Yeah. My boys, Fieldhouse, are not here, so you may be my brewery of the show. Out of nowhere, like a Randy Orton RKO. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Out of the new BC. Out of the new BC. Rusted Rake with the spruce tips. Ooh. It's got like a tiny aftertaste, a little bit. Gin. No. It's pretty good. One thumb up. No? <laughs> no beer that tastes like beer in my books. Sours only. All right. I have one remaining token. Matt. Wisely. Matt, what's the dumbest goddamn beer on your the on the dumbest list? Dumbest goddamn what's beer. What's the stupidest thing I could get with this See, remaining token? I, I want to give you something you'll like, but that would not be a sight. What sounds awful because we've got five minutes left it's not I, awful okay it's weird. this isn't awful this is just weird and i didn't get to it i want you to try the homestead cherry farmhouse ale from mount aerosmith that is booth six okay let's go they don't have it <laughs> oh no <laughs> They only have the Sprout Root and the Weekend Rambler. Well, um, I mean, I'll get what they have. They have a mango sour. Try it. If you want to try it, try it. Try Live that. your best life. All right, let's go. My battery's exhausted. They just rang an enormous bell to say at the end of Beer Fest. But I did manage to get the Scroot Root IPA from Aerosmith Brew Mount Aerosmith Brewing. The other spruce tip IPA for today. It's also really good. This is the third of three, weirdly, spruce tip IPAs I've tried on the day. And it's tough. It's tough, but I think I gotta give the edge to Rust Rake Brewing from that news bay. Uh, big fan of Beer Fest. Everything was great. Thanks, Ashley, for the ticket. 
I had a wonderful time. It was really nice to be back. I got to try a lot of really new and interesting beers. Uh, that's it. Thanks everybody for watching. Goodbye.